What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Weld Man's Podcast. My name is Brian Brosi. I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Keone Tita. Keone, how are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks again, everybody, for listening to us. I mean, we really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Um, you know, please, if you're getting something out of it, please spread the word to, to everybody. Um, anyway, today, Brian and I want to talk about a pretty relevant topic, and we just wanted to put... I don't know, some common sense thinking around this topic. And it's this whole COVID stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, um, we're circling back around to this topic. Yeah, and I and unfortunately, I think we're going to be circling back around to it quite a bit. But I, mm. I do I do want to, I don't know, put a, a common sense spin from two, you know, from both of us who certainly are admittedly not experts on this at all. Mm -hmm. You know, so you guys out there take take what we're going to say with a grain of salt. Um, however, because we're not experts, I think it's even more important to put a common sense kind of foundation to our approach like we yeah. do with everything. So yeah, so the first right. thing being is we are not experts. We <laughs> admit that, um, you know, Brian is an expert in physical therapy. I'm an expert in natural medicine. That's where I'd say my expertise lies. Um, and because we're not experts, and when I say experts, I'm saying infectious disease specialists, unless I don't know, Brian, you're certainly not an infectious disease specialist, right? Nope, definitely not. It's a okay. shame that they don't do this on the news as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and, and I think it's, well, I think, I think it should be, right? Yes. I think there ought to be a caveat. Say, okay, this is what we're gonna say to you, but please know we are not infectious disease experts and right. you should defer to infectious disease experts like, you know, your local one at your local hospital metro area, or, yes. and, and for me, that's a guy named Dr. Oles, who with the Wake Forest System of Medicine here, who really tries to make it, make this whole COVID thing and put it in very basic terms. Um, he obviously doesn't have a big media, uh, social media following though, because people are using, um, I don't know, their, their favorite health guru or, or, political right. person or whatever to to come to some decision about being vaxxed or being unvaxxed or or how bad the vaccinations are and all that yeah so and then and then our national guy is uh dr fauci you know so brian and i are going to defer to these people before we are going to defer to anybody that's on social media or anybody else i mean we're gonna we're gonna put more weight in what they say than we're gonna than i am in what um what i say and what you say yes right uh, that's we're just going to weight that more and so that's the first that's kind of the first common sense step i try to present to people i'm not an expert but i'm going to defer to them however this is what i know mm -hmm. okay so take it for for what it is so another common sense thing um without getting into detail we know we know that this, this vaccine, when it rolled out back in January, what happened was death rates and infection rates went way down, right? I mean, we saw the numbers. They kind of spiked in January and then they went way down. Anybody can see that. You can go look on a graph. That's what happened. And now the numbers are coming back up, at least the infectivity rates. So and what is that? You're talking about that? when the vaccine rolled out? Yeah, when the vaccine correctly. rolled out. Okay. Right, yeah. So just based on that alone, without even getting into numbers, mm. something's going on there that seems to suggest the vaccines helped. Sure. Right? Sure. Now, what has happened is we have something called a Delta variant, all right? Think mm. about the Delta variant as coronavirus 5.0, okay? The vaccines were developed for coronavirus 1.0. Mm -hmm. What we know about coronavirus 5.0, okay, because it mutates. The longer a virus mm -hmm. is in a population, it will mutate. Mm -hmm. If 1.0 doesn't have good receptacles, human bodies to infect, which the vaccines seem to get rid of it or dispense with it, it will change. So it's like this constant struggle between the vaccine and, you know, um, the virus. So the virus is a 5.0. And what we see with this this Delta variant that we now have is that its infection rate is a lot, lot higher. Like it's what we call it in a, in medical terminology, we call it an R naught value. And basically what the R naught value is, 
is it just shows how infectious something else the virus is or whatever right. bug you're dealing with is okay so coronavirus 1.0 was basically had an r naught of two basically it meant that if one person gets gets coronavirus it's highly likely that two more people will get it this one on the other hand has an r naught of about eight so if one person gets it it's very likely that eight people will get it so it's it's highly <laughs> infectious it's very yeah. very contagious so we're dealing with a different animal than what the vaccines were actually produced for. So I just want to put that out there. So people kind of understand that. Sure. And if we, again, we just start basic and logically, we do this every year with the flu. So right. we were talking about how it was no different from the flu from one perspective a long, long time yeah. ago. And now all of a sudden that a similar group of people who may be saying that is all of a sudden not kind of catching on board with, well, we have a new flu vaccine every year. Why wouldn't we have a new coronavirus vaccine or we do know it mutates and then we know it mutates to survive so ie be more uh infectious makes sense as well right and and i think your point is well taken we just like um the flu right the coronavirus is probably with us to stay right so we're probably gonna have be dealing with it for a while and we'll probably have you know vaccines better vaccines developed for. Hence, there's some talk out there about doing a booster shot and all that stuff, all right? None of this, so none of this is unexpected. This is this is what's going on. So I just wanna, I wanna put that out there for people to kind of get an idea of what we are dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. Now, can I, can yeah, I, go ahead. I interject as far as just all the way back to the beginning is like how we build know how we trust people why we trust certain people like the infectious disease doctor and we start weighting these opinions we can yeah. talk about kind of our education you know and think about like under or even shoot like high school biology you learn some very very basic rules of how biology in the world is kind of governed and then right. like with physics you learn some very very basic rules of how things run on planet earth essentially right and with that you know, there's further, further fields of study. And then we all, so the infectious disease doctor went so far down a route where he's such an expert in it. Like, like we were talking about before, he's the expert in it. Yeah. And you have someone like you or I, who we followed a similar trajectory to this infectious disease expert up until it became time to start being an expert in infectious disease. So right. that's when you, you start weighting all these opinions, knowing, you know, at a certain point, like we talk about the art of medicine, you're, it, it, is, it is kind of our duty to practice and listen to the most educated people, whether it be an infectious disease like this or not, or like in an ACL case where it's like, okay, you, you have an ACL repair, who do you want to go to? You want to go to the person who spent the most time in that education right. um, going down that field. While your trainer may have some great information, right? They just don't have the wealth and the depth of knowledge or rigor of knowledge that the physical therapist or whoever, right? I'm just naming specifics to kind of demonstrate this hierarchy of how we develop kind of weighting these opinions. Right. And, and that speaks to know thy limitations, which is part, right. really part of the Hippocratic oath for healthcare provider. It's like, you know, you're, you're a doctor of physical therapy. I'm a doctor. I'm a I'm trained as a primary care physician um, with a focus in natural medicine. I, I am not going to perform brain, brain surgery on somebody. I don't have that expertise. I'm certainly not going to, I'm certainly not going to go out there and put out information on don't get vaccinated because my 13 hours or 1300 hours doesn't matter. And let's say I did 10,000 hours of reading this stuff on my own. It pales in comparison to what an infectious disease specialist has done based on their education. So right. know that limitations is a big deal. And it's a and it's very important because, you know, me and you, Brian, I mean, although we would love to have a million followers following our podcast, maybe one day we'll get there. You know, Ooh. but there are people out there that do have that. Like, for example, this Dr. McCullough, who I, you know, I have a a lot of respect for in some ways, but if he's if he has 10 million followers and he's putting out there that these vaccines don't work. And he's an osteopath. That's what he is. He's a doctor of osteo osteopathy. Then I have a problem with that. You know, in my opinion, he should be censored, at least as far as the coronavirus 
expertise is. Hmm. And if he's going to get an expert that he calls on his site to, to downplay coronavirus, then he needs to get an infectious disease specialist to at least fact check everything or at least get it on to, to be balanced, you know, mm. on his website. So he's recently been censored and I'm, I, you know, I'm kind of this way about it. I mean, I, I think it's good to have a discussion about this and to toss it around like we are, but to, but to dangerously imply that vaccines don't work or that are harmful when 10,000 other infectious disease specialists, and you're not even an infectious disease specialist are saying otherwise, that's a big issue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. That's a that's a big freaking issue. Um, I didn't so, realize uh, anything about Mercola. Yeah, he like yeah, that. he got censored, censored. And, you know, and I haven't I have a little bit of an issue with that, you know, but also if if you're putting out information that is harmful, you know, you're you're kind of crossing the line with free speech, so to speak. Right. I mean, it's kind of that whole thing. Like if I if I say the vaccines are are you know, or imply the vaccines are killing you when the data says completely the opposite. And I have a million followers. A lot of those people are going to, you know, take my word for it. And I'm not even, you know, I'm not even the expert in it. You know, this is one of the things why I said, you know, I I really wish when, when, when uh, President Trump was in office, I really wish he did not surreptitiously get the vaccine. I wish he would have done it on TV because I don't think we would be in as bad as a mess as we are now with it if he would have done that. Because, you know, for, for them, it became political. That um, It was called a hoax at first. Then it was like something the Democrats did. And then it was called the, the China virus that China did it, you know, purposely. I mean, you know, all that set aside we still needed to get a vaccine. It doesn't matter how it started or all this other stuff. We know that it was in the population. And if a leader like that downplays the severity of the vaccine and then goes and gets it surreptitiously without really telling anybody until after the fact, that's a big problem. To me, that does harm. You know, Mm -hmm. when a medical expert or, or somebody with a medical degree, no matter what it is, who has a huge following or a fitness guru has a huge following, and there's a lot of people out there that have a much bigger following than us. Or a superior says, toxicologist. Oh, Come. yeah. Well, you know, exactly. So if you're going to come out and say something that goes against what the majority of expert opinion is, you better at least put a caveat there that you're not an expert and that, you know, take, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But according to my reading, this is what it is the, you know, so on and so on. And at least, at least specify, I think, like, well, were you vaccinated or not? Are you telling your family to get vaccinated or not? You know, that that's another thing. Like HIPAA, HIPAA requirements are, you know, if me and you, if, if you know, if me and you uh, shared a patient and we share a lot of patients, if me and you started talking about their medical history on this podcast and stuff, that goes completely against HIPAA requirements without, without getting their consent. Mm-hmm. But but the general public, you know, if somebody comes into you is in the general public and asks if you're vaccinated, that that does not go against HIPAA at all. Mm-hmm. You know, like if, if 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 I own a business and I ask if you're getting va- if you've been vaccinated, um, that's not against HIPAA. Now you could you could you don't have to answer me, mm-hmm. um, you know, but I could also deny you for coming into my business too, you know. Yes. If, I, if that's why I'm asking. So so that's another thing like HIPAA is between healthcare providers. Um, it's not between the general public and stuff. So I just, I want to make that kind of put that out there too, at least my understanding of it. Yeah. I, um, I don't want to stay on it too long, Keone, but I was just curious as to how is Mercola being censored or what, what, what is I, the I, censorship? I, I think, I think that they, um, I think like, Facebook and social media has blocked him based on the information he's putting out in regards to COVID. But in some form, he's being censored. I don't know all the details about it. And I don't know if it's a brief censorship or what. And you think, kind of in your opinion, that the, we should do that? Well, I, I think, I, it, I guess. no, I know I'm with you, Brian. I have a, I have a big issue with it. Too. I think I have a, I, in one hand, yes. If the information you're putting out there is doing harm, then yes, you should be censored. 
if you're just putting it out there in discussion format to talk about it and get opinions and you know bat around ideas and stuff that's a whole nother thing that's a whole nother thing so yeah so yeah it's a, like it's a strange it gives me a strange feeling like it does you too like you know you know i could just see well you know what mm -hmm. stops somebody from censoring us for talking about natural therapeutics but the one thing about us brian i will say is that you know to us medicine is medicine you know i'm not mm -hmm. going to sit there and say take your vitamin d supplement in lieu of the vaccine you know right um, yep if we're not going to do that we, we but we may say this we're not going to deny that healthy lifestyle change may help you from getting very sick and may even prevent you from transmitting the disease it may help mm -hmm. there's some there's some neat data on that that shows that mm -hmm. but here's the other thing I want people to know that data on vitamin D. Well, let's not even talk about vitamin D. Like, why don't we get back to some of these like experimental treatments people are throwing around. You've heard of ivermectin, right? And hydrochloroquine for as in regards to coronavirus. Yes, not the first one. All right. Well, ivermectin is a, is the latest and greatest new, new treatment for coronavirus, but whether it's vitamin D ivermectin or hydrochloroquine, when, when these studies started, we had, the first big trial on this mRNA vaccine, it had 75,000 participants all over the world who were doing these trials to see if this vaccine worked. That's and a when good you sample these, size. If I know anything oh, from my yeah. statistics education, don't know much, a, but I know that's a good sample any, size. Anytime you have a sample size over 10,000, you're doing really good, really good. So we have about first trial, 75,000, right? Not only this, Brian, so when you have a trial, I, I mean, you know this about research, when you do a trial and do research, Basically, you follow every one of those participants to see what adverse reaction has happened. You mm -hmm. document it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Document it down to the T. And guess what? Not one single person died from that vaccine. Or now, got a bigger pee pee. <laughs> well, we don't know about that. <laughs> I'm oh, still I waiting. To see. I, I'm still. I was. <laughs> I'm still waiting on the data on that. But. So, so now we're at hundreds of thousands of people with these trials where they were followed, right? Again, right. guess what? Not one person has died that we could, we could definitively say from the vaccine, all right? right. So there's that. Okay. Now let's contrast that with the, the vaccine adverse event reporting system or the VAERS data, right? I don't know if you've seen this posted around. Anyway, this is a system where anybody can report any adverse event that's happened to them and they can say that they think it was related to the vaccine, okay? But it's not data that is tracked. It's like me and you can make a phone call right now. Hey, I got the, va I got the vaccine, um, you know, two a months ago. Ringing in my ears. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, now I have ringing in my ears. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like that. So it, it gets documented. And that data is not useless data. It's not by any means. It, it helps us determine what, uh, if there are like trends or anything like that. Right. But yeah, it's, a great it's not point. data that's definitive. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what do we see with that? So there's possibly some deaths, according to that VAERS data that are associated with the vaccine. We don't know okay. for sure because we can't document all of them, but we can say somebody, somebody, a lot of people have called up. Let's say, let's say worst case scenario. And I'm just throwing this number out there. I've seen this on the internet. 12,000 people reported to VAERS, that VAERS data, that they died from the vaccine. Like somehow family members call, well, they got the vaccine uh, four days later, a week later, a month later, two months later, they died. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, we have to go through each one of those to see if it was really due to the vaccine. However, let's, let's say it's true. Let's say 12,000 people died from this vaccine, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's compare how many people have died from COVID in this country. It's well over 600,000. So worst case scenario, let's say 12,000 died from the vaccine, 600,000 died from COVID, and the ones who didn't die, many of them have long COVID symptoms also, it's still a no-brainer. Like, okay, so 12,000 died from the vaccine, you still should get vaccinated based on the kill ratio, the kill rate of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that whole argument, I mean, to me, I just want to put in common sense, it, it, makes, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me at all. Because first of all, with the virus, virus data, we don't know 
if there's a strong correlation between adverse events and the vaccine. As time goes on, we may see that there is a strong correlation, but there really isn't. And even in the worst case scenario, let's say 120,000 people have been vaccinated in this country, and I haven't seen this number put out there, have died from the vaccine. Guess what? It's still better to get the vaccine based on how many people have died from getting COVID. You know, so it's like, let's put it in worst case scenario perspective so that people can get an idea of when they're kind of vaccine hesitant, like what kind of choice they can make. So that's where my mind goes. It's very, you know, it's a very logical common sense approach, which is, you know, like I said, we're no experts. So this is the way I'm looking at it. Okay. And I, and yeah. I would hope I that other people, that. yeah, I would hope that other people now, so the other thing I said, so now there's other treatments out there. So there, there's these purported uh, experimental treatments, ivermectin, hydrochloroquine. We've already been through the hydrochloroquine. So we already talked about hundreds of thousands of people in vaccine R mRNA vaccine trials, right? The most trials that have been done on ivermectin, the most, I mean, when you take all the studies together about, on ivermectin, mm -hmm. they're all small studies. But when you add up all the participants in that study, guess how many there are? 2,200 people, 2,200 people. Those studies indicate just like vitamin D that there's something to ivermectin maybe helping. And ivermectin is an antiparasitic drug, by the way, it's not an antiviral, but there is something that seems to show that it may help people with COVID. But 2,200 people is a very, very, very small sample size. And then you have the logistics of it, right? Ivermectin is, is, is like, First of all, it's not easy, easy to get right now. Um, I'm sure we, you know, maybe we could change that if, if we found that this medicine is really something to, to hang our right. hat on, maybe we could change that. Um, and there are also some negative, you know, some awful negative side effects to ivermectin. And, and that's not to say that there's not, that there can't be negative side effects to the vaccine. There is no drug or medical intervention out there that ha is 100% safe, right? Yes. Yes. I mean, it's just, it's just not, I mean, with what you do and I do, it's not a hundred percent safe. It's, it's pretty damn safe though. I mean, acupuncture is pretty, pretty <laughs> safe. Given vitamin D is pretty darn safe, but there are people who may get an allergic reaction to that. And we see this with vaccines and stuff like that. So, so anyway, you're, you're looking at very small studies on these experimental drugs um, and throwing it out there that people should take ivermectin um, and people going and getting ivermectin or hydrochloroquine, um, getting it prescribed to them, I just think is an accident waiting to happen. I, I hope that there's more studies on both of those. And if they work and there's very little negative side effects from them, then sure, we can use it. But we're talking about access here. We're talking about a free vaccine that can help prevent you from getting very, very sick at least with the COVID alpha variant, it seems to prevent you from getting that, not necessarily with the Delta variant, but it seems to reduce your risk of getting it. And this is free and the vaccines are everywhere. Um, for most, most part, most people can get them. Whereas ivermectin, hydrochloroquine, we don't have the studies. They may not be readily available. And both of those drugs can have really bad negative consequences if the wrong person is taking them. Um, so, so that's basically what you're talking about is getting the vaccine to prevent getting it or possibly taking one of those two drugs when you do get it in the risk. Of right, each. right. And that's the thing. Prevention is the best cure, right? We don't want to wait till you get it and then sure, and sure. then treat yeah. it. So prevention is the best cure. And that's what this what this vaccine does. All right. So now I can hear people out there who listen to us. But wait a second. Wait a second. This is probably what some of my naysayers are saying. They're probably saying, but. This vaccine, what we're seeing now, does not prevent people from getting it. Okay, fair enough, true. And we're also de dealing with a different virus, if you will, than the what the vaccines were actually developed for. So people are getting the Delta variant, right? So, um, so for example, um, you know, I, I, there's there's an example of that's been thrown around the internet of Israel, right? They're highly vaxxed population, like 90% of the population is vaxxed. And what they're seeing is, is a, a large percentage of the vaccinated are also getting this virus. Um, also, a large percentage of the unvaccinated are also getting the virus there. But what we what the data is showing across the board is that the people that actually get this Delta variant that are vaxxed 
are not getting really sick and dying. Whereas the people that aren't vaxxed are, have more of a risk of getting very, very sick and, and possibly dying. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, I want to explain um, a little bit about the biology as best as I know it, um, just so people can understand what's actually going on. So for, so when you get a, a flu or cold virus or like this coronavirus, it seems to really like hanging out in the nasopharynx in the back of the throat, right? You get a sore throat and everything else. What we're finding with this Delta variant um, is that the viral load, once you catch it, is like a thousand times greater than the, than the coronavirus alpha, okay? Um, and, and the unvaxxed have a potential, I mean, the uh, vaxxed have a potential to get it, all right? Not at, the high, not at high rates as the unvaxxed, but you can still get it. So, so the way the mRNA vaccine worked is it actually promotes what we call IgG immunoglobulins, right? And these are immunoglobulins that flow throughout the body, okay? They're not real, they don't really reside in the mucosa, okay? They're, they're more in the body. So the, the mRNA vaccine puts this IgG barrier up in the body, but when the virus attacks you, it gets attached to the mucosa and that's where IgA is mostly, right? It lines your gut, it's in your mouth, it's in the nasopharynx and stuff like that. It takes about two days for your, IG, your IgG corona vaccine uh, barrier to get rid of that stuff that viral load in your nasal pharynx. And it will, like it, 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 your body needs a little bit of time to see what's happening and it will get rid of it. In an unvaxxed person, it sits there in your nasal pharynx. Not only are you spreading it, but now given a little bit of a few days, now it gets into your body and you have no IgG protection, okay? This is why, you know, the CDC and the WHO has come out and said, we should wear masks now. Right, because what we found was we thought with the 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 alpha variant that you know we could that it won't spread like the the vaccinated won't spread it. But you know what? Now we're finding that the vaccinated can spread it at least for two days. Mm -hmm. You know, it may not be very sick, but we can spread it. So therefore, they're asking everybody to be masked. So the other thing about science is you follow the data as the data comes up, and when you're dealing with a virus it mutates. I mean, it's constantly mutating. Mm -hmm. The more it sits in a population, the more it mutates. The more it's in a population, the one that has the better contagion or, or virulence um, is going to be the one that gets spread. Yeah. All right. So, so I wanted to explain that to people because a lot of people don't know why, you know, they think when you take the vaccine, that, well, that you have immunity to this virus and you won't get it. That's not true. What you what you do have is you're really protecting yourself from getting very, very sick. And we talked about that in our episodes, talking about the spike proteins. And yeah. that's personally, Keone, just personally, as I sit here right now on this Saturday recording with you, my fiance is in a field hospital and she's been there for the last uh, 11 hours. She'll be there for three or four more completely gowned up in a field hospital wow. and I don't understand why we can't get the mask situation under control and that's how I always felt it seems to me fucking logic would point mm -hmm. to continuing to wear the mask and it honestly and this is what I was saying way back when this began is just I don't see a time where this doesn't become the smart thing to do like the mask in the grocery store unfortunately for till the end of time and especially as we grow the population more and more and more it just seems like a smart courteous thing to do at the yep. very least and it's a logical thing to do and here's the thing about masks let's just talk about that the mask situation right if i'm wearing a surgical mask not let's say not everybody has an n95 but at this point if you really want to protect yourself from getting the delta variant yeah i recommend the n95 However, any mask will afford some protection. If it's only 1% protection, then that, that in, when you look at big numbers, that's a big deal. When you're looking at millions of people, 1% protection is a big number, right. you know? 5% um, is better. So yes, and, and also, you know, if you're coughing and hacking and, you know, 
you know, have all these saliva droplets, mucus droplets coming out, coughing and hacking, the masks give a barrier. So what they do is, and we talked about it as a podcast, it decreases the amount of viral load that you're exposed to at the very least by having a barrier up there. Yes. To me, it's very, it's very common sense. I do think, and I, I feel the people's frustration who are watching the CDC and say, well, they said, they said, wear masks, don't wear masks, wear masks. Or they said at the very, actually, it went like this. Don't wear masks, right. wear masks, don't wear masks, wear masks. And, and if you look at that and you're going, what the hell is that all about? You have to look at the science, right? So in the beginning, when they said don't wear masks, the big thing was, is there weren't enough masks to go around. They wanted to reserve them for healthcare providers, okay? Which and, is unfortunate and scary in its own right and does help kind of perpetuate some of these conspiracies, if we're being oh, honest. Oh, a- absolutely it does, right? Because because with Americans- You weren't telling us the fucking truth. <laughs> like that- Well, that, that's, what it get, that's what it gets turned to. That's what it gets turned to. You're like, you weren't telling the truth. You're telling us half truths. You're misleading us. Um, so yeah, it turns into this conspiratorial nature. And if you are prone to conspiracy theories, you will just grab right onto that, you know, and think that there's something nefarious about that. But maybe, maybe there's a logical explanation why they said don't wear masks at the beginning. And the lo- most logical explanation to me that makes the most sense is we didn't have enough to go around and we wanted to reserve them for healthcare providers. Then we found a little bit about information about the virus, right? And so we were like, oh shoot, look at the look at some of the Asian countries wearing masks. They seem to be doing better, so on and so on. Our data seems to suggest masks work. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Everybody mask up for the alpha variant coronavirus. And then all of a sudden we see, oh, now we're all vaccinated. The vaccinated don't need to wear a mask. But if you're not vaccinated, wear a mask. Okay, that was the next thing. And now we're back to the thing, oh shit. Now the people that are vaccinated are getting coronavirus and may potentially be spreading it. Wear the mask. I mean, there's the logical progression of it, right. you know, as we, right. follow the, as we follow the data. There's no nefarious intent with that. It's just following the science is really what's going on there. You know, I mean, and if at you're the g- highest levels of that education at the infectious disease right. level at the, those type of doctors, that is, you know, it, it goes back to the art of medicine. That's exactly what they're having to do. And they're the most informed people to make those educated hypotheses in regards to what we should and shouldn't be doing. Right. Yeah. And so, so it goes back to like, that's, that's kind of who we should listen to, but you know, if you know, I, I don't want to downplay, here's, here's the issue. You know, that stuff confuses the public unless it's explained to them in a logical way. That will confuse the public, all right? And um, so then- can get the who to start promoting the Well Man's podcast to help clear that out, <laughs> really help yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, it really just comes down to why these decisions were made and why we, why we did them to get a better understanding. But so that's more logical than going into conspiracies like, well, they told us not to wear the mask. And then you then you jump from there. Well, are they trying to kill us? And you're just like, come on, that makes no sense at all. And it's if a there's a cons- jumping. Right. It, it's you know, here, here's the thing. Remember the conspiracy theory that came out about the Twin Towers? You know, they, they the government detonated themselves. You know, how does a how does a tower fall flat down? You know, well, if you well, they did, Keone. Well, yeah, right. How does it? How does it do it? How does it do it if it's not a controlled demolition? Yes, I remember right? but these. Then, yeah. So, so then, but then the thing is, do you know how many thousands of people it would take to be involved in that conspiracy theory, where nobody in the World Trade Center tower saw these this demolition team going in there and putting the putting the explosives all up and down the towers? Right. You know. I mean, if you're going to talk about a conspiracy theory, a big one that's going to take a lot of people and nobody has come out and said, hey, you know, I was there and I put the explosives in there and here's my proof. I mean, no one ever, you know, why, why aren't you going to go to the most logical explanation? I mean, shit, uh, two planes hit the towers, you know, steel, steel, uh, you know, after a while, steel will, will melt. I mean, at, yeah, at a certain mold. point, mm-hmm. yeah, it will, it will lose its integrity you know, so so using simple things like saying, well, you know, the steel, steel melts at 3000 degrees, but the, the highest temperature in that building was 1000 degrees. There's a lot more that goes into the structure of the building. So who do you want to talk to? You want to talk to a, a structural engineer about what actually happened there, mm-hmm. you know, and when you do, you're just like, oh, OK, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But anyway, my point with that diatribe is just that, you know, it's like, let's let's find out the logical reasons why 
these things are changing with the CDC and who. And, I, and again, I, I think they're, they're, you know, they played a part in being part of the problem because their messaging is a little weird sometimes and they don't explain it thoroughly. And so that's why I wanted to just come out and, and say that. The other, the other thing, this is really interesting, which, you know, I, until I actually looked, but both me and you know this, we know in research that lies spread much faster than truths. I mean, hmm. that's just the nature of it. I mean, and it's unfortunate that it's that way. And that's why I think it's very important for people to at least do what we're doing and stand up and go, wait a second, you know, here's, here's another way to think about it. I mean, Brian, I got to tell you, like if the data comes out and says that the vaxxed are dying um, at the same rates as the unvaxxed, I'm going to be like, yeah, we have a problem. We screwed up with this vaccine rolled out. That is not the case. I mean, the people that are in the hospitals are the unvaxxed and they're the ones having the most problem. And that's been shown over and over and over again. But okay, so I know some people out there will probably go, well, I have this data here that shows that, that otherwise. I'm like, let's just make it simple for you, okay? Go, on, go, go and look at the data with some of these Asian countries where, let's say like South Korea, where masks are used and they got the vaccine rolled out. Go see how many deaths they've had Per, per capita compared to the United States. We, we have utterly failed our population with the way we disseminated information and our political, politicalization of this whole thing and us being on social media th and everybody thinking they're an expert, you know? Whereas these other countries, I mean, hell, New Zealand has a steel wall where nobody in their country, I think one or two people since it started died in their country. And we, ha we don't even have, as far as, in you know big countries go we don't even have a really big high population density compared to south korea china or japan and they are doing far far better than us far far better than us based on you know people kind of being on board with the masking and and even the vaccinations now i will say this one of the things and i know you're in florida and one of one and i'm in north carolina and it's hot as hell hot as hell here and we have a virus raging. So what do people do when it's hot? They go in ha their houses. So a lot of it is behavioral. So everybody crowds inside indoors in their air conditioned units. And guess what? A virus loves that when people crowd in together. So it may have something to do with the season and just the habits of people where we're getting this surge. But so I don't discount that either. Um, you know, if you're doing a lot of indoor stuff, but but you know, Florida doesn't have the best, um, at least nationally, uh, reputation for helping control the virus with their with their no mask mandates and not taking it serious from the beginning. And and then you look at the Southeast Bible Belt states, and a lot of them it kind of fits a trend of where masking was like poo pooed or vaccines are poo pooed. And guess what? They're the they're the ones who have the search now. Everybody's having a problem with it now, but it's usually it's the southeastern states that kind of are having like Louisiana, Florida. I mean, I mean, you name it, Georgia. They're kind of having the big numbers. I mean, I think in you just mentioned like your your fiance, right? There, she's in a field hospital right now. Is that yeah, because they don't have beds? Yeah, it's completely out of control here. Um, <laughs> multiple patients to a room in a situation where that shouldn't be the case. Field hospital, no. yeah, like it's apocalyptic. Um, I could go on and on about Florida, but it just points back to kind of what I was saying about the mask. And yeah. the unfortunate reality is trying to have this conversation without any politics is impossible. And now right. that is what is hindering us. Right. Um, and that's and, real unfortunate. Right. And I, and I just want to say another thing, too, that we do know um, in any in any topic, no matter what the science says, you're always going to have your crackpots out there, right? So, for example, sure. climate change, all right? Uh, 10,000 scientists. Hottest, hottest month ever rec recorded on planet Earth, July. Right. You hear that, Keone? Yeah, I did. I know that. And 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 the trend has shown that the months are getting hotter. And yeah, we're a little fucked. <laughs> yeah, right, right. A little fucked. So, so anyway, you have 10,000 climate climatologists, climate scientists saying we have an issue here with climate science, right? We have it with climate change, and it's it's man derived, um, we're playing a big role in it. Um, and then you have one or two who are saying the opposite. Who are you gonna believe? The majority consensus 
or the one or two crackpots who also have the PhD in climate scientists, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and also, I, I just want to say, um, some, for most part, scientists, they, they like this, this bantering, right? If there's, a, if there's a theory out there, you're going to have people out there trying to put cracks in that theory to, make, to solidify that theory and to make right. sure That's that we're we being want. right. That's what we want. So these two crackpots out there who are saying climate change isn't happening, most of the time they're not actually saying that. They're just, they're just throwing some other things out there to prove other things. But guess what? The media glums onto it based on your political party and then gets this person interviewed and then sound whatever bites, channel you pick and then sound bites one thing that he says that's taken out of context and you, you go from there you know now there are some people where you know they they really are saying these crackpots are actually saying that climate science doesn't isn't happening or that covid isn't happening and i, I want to give an example of one person besides mercola we talked about that oh that is doing this all right and this is out there anyway there's a guy named dr robert merlone okay and he he is he helped develop the platform for the mrna vaccine all right now okay. somehow it got put out there that this guy invented the mrna vaccine so therefore whatever he says about the vaccine is the truth Gold. and he yeah. and he's created a lot of vaccine hesitancy based on what he's saying First of all, number one, it is a known fact. It's been debunked. Dr. Robert Malone did not invent the mRNA vaccine. It was actually a, a Dr. Catalin Carico uh, and a Dr. Drew Weissman who, who developed and invented the mRNA vaccine. Um, the research on this mRNA vaccine is not new. It's been going on for years, since the 80s. It's been going on, this research. These two people, Dr. Catalin Carico and Dr. Drew Weissman are probably going to get the Nobel Prize soon at some point based on the inventing the mRNA vaccine. Um, anyway, this Dr. Rob Malone is out there and he's creating vaccine hesitancy and he's saying stuff that can certainly be disputed by infectious disease specialists. I'm sure, I'm sure he would uh, I'll argue me and you in no time about as far as a vaccine, but in most yeah. of the, in fact, the 10,000 other infectious disease specialists just poo poo what he says. And basically he's not the inventor of the mRNA vaccine. So that's kind of the expert that's creating vaccine hesitancy. There's others out there um, that are also I'm glad doing I've never it. heard of this guy. Okay. Well, yeah. Anybody who's been following it has probably, mm -hmm. probably heard about him. There's, there's others out there like this, uh, Dr. Rob, uh, I think Mercola, Mercola, not, not Mercola, but um, I think it's spelled M-C-O-U-L-L-O-U-G-H, um, Dr. Robert Mercola, Mercola or something like that. But anyway, he's a, he's a, he's a cardiologist. So, and he's, he's talking about vaccine, he's creating some vaccine hesitancy too. Um, but again, he's been debunked and there's other things out there that also have been debunked. But anyway, um, by, by infectious disease specialists, but th these people are well-spoken. These are intelligent people too. So I don't, you know, right. there are variants and, and I just look at them like, okay, whatever they're bringing up, let's look, Hey, let's look into it, but let's not, let's follow the data and go with what, um, the majority consensus is on this without creating a conspiracy out of it. So that's kind of, that's kind of my my thing uh, with that. Like there are crackpots in every every uh, profession. There are people who are naysayers. Um, sometimes they're right. Most of the time they're wrong. There are known conspiracy theories that actually turn out to be true, like the Tuskegee experiments. Mm. Um, but that doesn't mean that now everything is a conspiracy theory either. I mean, let's let's use logic when we're when we're doing that. Um, the last thing I, I, I want to say, and this is kind of an example that I actually posted today on, on, on Facebook, and it kind of speaks to kind of what the media is doing, Brian. So let's say a village has 100 people, okay, and 99 of them have been vaccinated. One is not, okay, and then two people become sick with COVID. So one of, one of the people that has been unvaccinated and one of the vaccinated people. The media then reports that 50% of the cases occurred in the vaccinated. You see what I'm saying? So it's yeah, like- it sounds like a good headline. Yeah, it's a great Star grab them headline. But, but really what we're saying is 50%, you have a 50% infection rate because 
Yep. The one person who wasn't vax got it, it, and then one person out of 98 people actually got it also. So you have, if you're unvaxed, you have a 50% chance of getting COVID. If you are vaxed, you have less than a 10% chance or a 10% chance of getting COVID. What, what number do you want? Or do you want to report it with your sophistry, you know, like using just to use your own bias. Do you want to report it? 50% of the cases occurred in the vaccinated. That's the true statement, but it's a misleading statement. Right. You know? Yeah. So, so again, I always just say, all right, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. And I, I have the right, of course, to be wrong about this. So do you. And I will change my opinion. If I find out that people are dropping dead of being, I was told online the other day that I'm going to be dead in six months. So let's see if I'm dead in six months or, or six months past the vaccination. I already passed that mark, but let's see if I'm dead in six months from the vaccine. All right. That's what I was told. This is kind of the stuff that's put out there. Well, you should change your will to beneficiary of the well man's podcast. (laughs) What a great idea, Brian. (laughs) Anyway, it's, You know, we can use numbers to support our contention, right? Um, But numbers don't lie if you really get down to the details with them. So saying 50% of the cases occur, 50% of the cases in our example occurred in the vaccinated. Absolutely it did. But the correct thing would be to put a caveat there. And there are only two people that got it out of 100. And one of those two was unvaccinated, which means that if you're unvaccinated, it seems based on that data, anywhere from a 50% to 100% chance that you're going to get COVID. So what we see with this Delta variant now is we're pretty much getting there. If you are unvaccinated, based on the numbers, you are probably going to get COVID unless you hide yourself in a hole right now somewhere. It's a thousand times more contagious than the Delta, than the Alpha variant. If you are vaccinated, you probably have a small chance of also getting COVID, but guess what? You have a very, very, very small chance, at least compared to the unvaccinated, of getting very, very sick and dying. So based on what I know now, get vaccinated, people. I mean, just go get vaccinated and let's get out of this mess that we're in. If something changes as far as the vaccines go that you know is really compelling and what it'd have to be really compelling for me is to see that people vaccinated and the unvaccinated are dropping dead in the same numbers that that would be compelling for me and that is not true at all that's why i feel like there should be no censorship at all unfortunately dumb things should be allowed to be said but just like we kind of alluded to there what if the you know we turn out to be wrong and then we have to come up here and say we're wrong and we would be glad to do that because that is the truth Yep. But uh, we should be able to have this opportunity to speak our minds like we are right now. We should definitely, we, you know, discussion and debating, um, everybody being a, uh, you know, a, what would you say? Some, you know, batting around these ideas and discussing. This is one of the great things about social media um, is good, but at least use common sense in your judgment. You know, if yes. somebody, if, if somebody is a, is an avid fervent, I don't know, Trump supporter who, who, who 100% believes everything Trump says about the vaccine, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. If you are an avid Biden supporter and everybody on the left is saying get vaccinated, um, you know, and with that alone, without even taking into consideration any infectious disease specialist, then I think you ought to, you know, do a little bit of your own research. But really, go to the, go to the infectious disease specialists first. See what they're saying. There's, there's usually one in your area, all over the United States. There's one who kind of controls, like in the triad area, that controls the hospitals there. See what they're saying. See if they're part of this conspiracy theory. You know, I mean, that's it's such a ridiculous thing to say, but you know, these people are just like me and you. They have families. They go, you know, they they want. You know, they want people to get better. I, mm-hmm. I, me and you, I don't want to live my life thinking that, you know, <laughs> that the experts are out to do me harm. That's just not true. I mean, did you go to school and learn how to do harm with your physical therapy? I mean, is that your thing? I mean, no, right. we want, you know, most people. That's probably why you and I dropped out best. of religion, Kenny. <laughs> 
we yeah. don't want to be oh, told yeah. that the person above is doing us harm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that brings up a whole nother can of worms for me. But we'll, well talk, we gave we'll some talk. listeners. We lost some listeners. It was nice <laughs> having the podcast. Yeah. Anyway, that's. is there anything else that we should go over with that? I think really, like you wrapped up, Keone, the takeaway points are we want to be logical. I think we both agree that everyone has the right to their voice and opinion. Yeah. Um, and it is a matter of making the best choice for you and really considering humanity as a whole and doing your due diligence and kind of taking on the duty of your right. side of being a big part of this planet with all of us. So right. you have your individual situation and you are part of our big situation. And yes, we I, love you I and agree. we want you to be healthy. Yeah. And, and my only thing with that is everybody has an opinion, but all opinions are not weighted the same. So that just keep that in mind. It's great to have your opinion. It's great to mold around. I think social media is great. To go. But when you have a big following, um, you know, you have a responsibility to really do your homework on what you're finding. And, um, you know, and not we take that seriously people. ourselves. Oh, absolutely. 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 So. So if you want to uh, yell at Keone, Keone Tita on Facebook, <laughs> go into the comments and just rip them apart. And I'm Brian Brosey. You can find me on Facebook, just posting about sports and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something benign. Thanks, Brian. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening again. Yes. Until next week, be well, stay healthy. We love you. And we will talk with you next week. Take care, everybody.